In modern Los Angeles, police investigate a mystery nocturnal track that appears to be created by a gigantic beast. Reporter Ethan arrives to report. Despite seeing a clue, nobody answers his inquiries. In the midst of the field, a massive object appears. Pictures are taken and taken to his office. Ethan glances at his medallion and remembers what happened 15 years ago. Ethan visited an antique store with his parents as a child. While his father was selling an antique blade to Jack, Ethan discovered a weird box that opened upon detecting his presence and displayed a massive, glowing scale. Jack sensed the situation and feigned to have a heart attack, so he told Ethan a story while his father ran for aid. Legends said huge snakes named Imugus were converted into celestial dragons every 500 years for good acts. An object called Yu Yi Ju was required, which the evil snake Baraki attempted to take. To prevent this, Heaven's rulers concealed Yu Yi Ju in Korea, and when the local lord produced a daughter called Narin. She was meant to carry the Yu Yi Ju dragon birthmark on her shoulder. Unfortunately, Baraki learned this and was waiting for Narin's 20th birthday. The Heavens also chose Haram and Bachan to defend Yu Yi Ju. Haram learned about the wonderful Imuji from his instructor and visited its cave. Bachan also gave him a heaven-sent medallion to protect him. Haram had to make sure Yu Yi Ju would become a decent Imuji and not Baraki. For it, Narin was sacrificed. Haram and Narin became a pair after spending a lot of time together. Baraki attacked the village with his Atrix troops, which couldn't fight the Atrox's powerful creatures and sorcery. The troops checked every woman's shoulders. Getting a citizen to talk about Narin in exchange for privacy. The soldiers killed Narin's father to get her out of hiding and abducted her when they discovered the mark on her shoulder. Bachan and Haram attacked soldiers to rescue Narim moments later. Haram carried Narim to the Emuji cave as Bachan fought, observing her in distress. He quit guardianship. After leaving the medallion for Bachan to recover, Haram fled with Narim, avoiding sacrifice to Emuji. Baraki pursued them. The creature surrounded them on a cliff, and the pair opted to end things rather than be used for evil. After the narrative, Jack gave Ethan the medallion. They said that the boy was Haram and he was Bachan. Ethan had to find Sarah, their second chance to accomplish their job, who reincarnated Narin and had the dragon mark. Ethan asks his friend Bruce for aid finding Sarah using his computer abilities after remembering the whole story. Bruce says it will take time because hundreds of Sarahs have shoulder tattoos. The FBI receives the scale lab results and discovers a mysterious enormous beast in the city. Sarah and her best friend Brandy watch the news at the gym. When the camera shows the mystery trail's scale, Sarah is terrified and goes home to discover an old book of talismans, which she hangs on the wall to protect herself. Later, Brandy checks on her and doesn't believe Sarah that anything bad is likely to happen, but she convinces her to go out so she can forget her paranoia. At the pub, Sarah attempts to divert herself but can't shake her worry and leaves. A strange hobo suddenly appears and beats a bunch of men harassing Sarah on the street before departing without saying a word. Belafonte, the zoo's caretaker, hears strange noises and finds Baraki has slain an elephant. Belafonte and Baraki flee in fright, so an Atrix general discovers no traces. At the police station, Sarah tries to explain what happened. But no one thinks a hobo could beat three guys. A journalist likes her. He takes a picture of her since the story is intriguing. The next morning, Ethan searches the store but can't find Jack. The Atrix general questions why Ethan isn't searching for Yu Yi Ju, but Ethan awakens at his office. His co-worker brings the police station report, and Ethan knows it's Sarah when he sees the image. Ethan stays late at work to find her address. Seeking her address. While Belafonte tries to report the snake, the police don't believe him either. Sarah is leaving the station in her car, but touching it stops it. Terrified, she retreats and encounters a cop who wields a magical sword and attempts to kill her. Sarah wakes up in bed in excruciating pain and phones 911, which takes her to a hospital. Brandy subsequently tries to visit her friend, but the hospital receptionist refuses because she's not related. Brandy and her boyfriend went to Sarah's house to get some clothing for visitation. When they go outside to inspect, the whole house shakes. Baraki roars at them. The pair flees, but the general stops them. This allows Baraki to bite Brandy, but it throws her body in the pool when it realizes it's not Sarah. Next morning, Sarah tries to leave her hospital room but finds the door closed and a guard outside. Her screaming begins. 
She has to be forced to calm down by security and nurses. In the meantime, Ethan finally finds Sarah's profile, but a phone call tells him to hide a murder. Ethan goes to the address, which is Sarah's, and is happy to find that the dead girl isn't Sarah. He then hears a neighbor tell she spotted a gigantic snake and the house owner is hospitalized. The hospital receptionist tells Ethan that Sarah is isolated because her shoulder mark may be contagious. This seems suspicious. Belliford's psychiatrist declares him insane. Baraki stands at the window, and Belliford tries to establish his story. The snake leaves before the doctor can see it, sending Baraki to the psychiatric institution. Ethan is confused when he encounters a doctor who recognizes him from his stories. Him being a great fan. The doctor leads him to Sarah's room, where he finds her hesitant and scared due to unbelieved reports of danger. He says it's occurring, but Baraki attacks the hospital before he can finish. The doctor warns the couple and sends them out a back exit. The doctor reveals himself as Jack via an illusion after they leave, revealing he was the hobo. Ethan and Sarah run when they see Bruce in his car. Baraki chases them, but the automobile is faster and passes them. Few miles later, Bruce inadvertently hits someone with the automobile, and Ethan recognizes him as the Atrix General from his dream. The general wants Sarah, so Bruce shoots him and Ethan beats him with wood, but neither hurts him. Bruce then steals the general's sword. The sword sheaths itself because Bruce isn't its master, and the general attacks Bruce with magic. He tries to catch Sarah again, but is hit by a car. Ethan rushes Sarah into the new car and orders the driver to take them away. Later, Baraki calls in his entire Atrix army as backup. The FBI holds a meeting to discuss the situation. Higher-ups don't believe it, but there's enough evidence to suggest a fabled monster is loose and all the clues go to Sarah. Therefore, the agents are ordered to capture and maybe kill the girl. They also deploy soldiers to find the snake in a cave. The troops shoot. Baraki chases them out of the cave, where the general's magic defeats the soldiers, but the bullets don't work. The driver departs Ethan and Sarah on the beach moments later, telling them to leave town. After they leave, the driver admits she was Jack. Ethan and Sarah stroll to discuss their visions and kiss while Ethan considers Sarah may have to die for the Yu-Yi Jew. They then consult a psychology professor who extracts repressed memories. Sarah has memories of her father's death after the professor hypnotizes her, but she keeps returning to Narin and Haram's story. Sarah suddenly glows and floats, indicating Yu Yi Ju completion. Buraki has noticed this waking, so he comes to start destroying the house. In a car, Ethan and Sarah get away, and Ethan calls Bruce to ask for help. Soon after, the couple runs into Bruce at a calf. Bruce says that he has pulled some strings to get them a helicopter. He gives Ethan a gun, even though Ethan doesn't like guns. Jack arrives and tells Ethan he can't change Sarah's fate, so take her to the Emuji cave. Ethan ignores him and pulls Sarah out of the building before Baraki attacks again. Bruce drives the pair, but Baraki throws another car at them, crashing them. Ethan and Sarah flee again, but Baraki corners them. However, the cops shoot the snake, allowing the pair to escape. Ethan and Sarah climb the Liberty Building while Baraki chases them through the city and destroys it. Where the helicopter awaits. Baraki grabs it with its mouth when it tries to take off, so Ethan lets Sarah leap with him back to the roof before the snake destroys the helicopter. The sky darkens as Baraki prepares to consume Sarah, but army helicopters fire it. Baraki battles helicopters. Many of them crash but are eventually defeated by their attack. The general and his monsters arrive as support and smash everything in their way, including helicopters, tanks, and buildings. Sarah and Ethan exit the building and are spotted by two FBI officers who drive them away. When they hide in a safe facility, the agents disclose they've researched the legend and know Sarah's fate. One agent shoots Sarah, but Ethan leaps to save her, hurting his arm. When the agent tries again, his companion shoots first, recognizing killing two innocent people isn't the answer. Agent gives them his car keys and encourages them to act morally. Soon after, the general's animals attack the couple on the road with fireballs. The car flips when one hits it, knocking out the couple. Ethan wakes up bound to a pole in Baraki's lair. 
Sarah is carried to the altar to be sacrificed to the serpent, but Ethan's desperation activates the pendant in time. A bright light from heaven hits the pendant and the Atrix army, killing Baraki and everyone else. Except the general. The flaming pendant destroys the rope, forcing Ethan to battle the general at the altar, but he is easily defeated. The general attempts his final strike. He unintentionally hits the pendant and dies from magic. After waking up, Baraki throws Ethan aside and pursues Sarah. The good Emuji finally appears and fights Baraki. As monsters fight, Ethan tries to flee, but Sarah realizes Emuji is losing and accepts her fate. She calls the good Emuji and sends the Yu Yi Ju, who promptly awakens as a legendary dragon. This new power allows the dragon to easily beat Baraki and destroy it with a fireball. The dragon then checks on Ethan, who is carrying Sarah's unconscious body. The dragon expels the Yuji Ju for a few seconds, transforming Sarah into her pure essence so she can appear before Ethan to say she loves him and they'll see each other again. After Sarah joins the Yuji Ju, the dragon carries it to heaven using Sarah's tears. Ethan watches them with sadness and turns around to witness Jack's spirit go as he praises him for doing the right thing. Thanks for watching.